This is a show for anyone born and not manufactured. Anyone who's got the crest tattooed on their skin. Anyone who can walk to Goodison and anyone who wakes up at 4 a.m. to watch a game. This is for anyone who's ever been in Goodison Park and watched the old lady shake to her foundations. This is for everyone in the School of Science. This is Toffee TV. Hi, I'm Roberto Martinez and you're watching Toffee TV. Welcome to Toffee TV, a new show and YouTube channel for Evertonians by Evertonians. I'm Peter McPartland. And I'm Barry Cash, and we'll be here each week discussing everything Everton with ex-players, celebrities and fans. To get involved with the show, follow us on Twitter at ToffeeTV1 and also subscribe to our YouTube channel. Tonight join us to look back at Roberto Martinez's first season, local comedian Jake Mills and the footyscene.com David Freely. Jake, when you look back at last season, obviously Roberto Martinez hasn't took over the job yet. David Moyes had, had just left. What were your expectations for this season? Well, fearful, I, I, I would state that I was absolutely gutted when Moyes went. Uh, you know, there's, there's no hiding that. You know, it's different now when we're looking back in hindsight and we're all laughing when he lost his Man United job. But when he left Everton, I was gutted because I didn't know who it was who was capable of, of coming in to the club. You know, Martinez was always going to be linked, but he didn't really fill me with much excitement or you know much hope or anything. Um, I, and I remember when when he actually got the job, and you know, I, again, it didn't inspire me mm. too much. I was, I was. It was until I actually heard him talk in his first press conference. That was the only time, or the sorry, the first time when I I thought actually we might have got someone here. But, but before that, he didn't really excite me too much. But you know, now we look back how, how long was I and how, how long were a lot of us really. I, I think I was, in, I was in that camp. I was a little bit worried about his defensive duties yeah. at Wigan and things like that. We knew everything he'd bring coming forward, you know, yeah. how yeah. exciting Wigan were to watch, but always left the back door open, so to speak. And I think that concerned me at the time. But again, that first press conference, the minute he spoke and, you know, whether it's the foreign accent or anything, fell in love a little bit that yeah. day, and it's uh, it's blossomed from there, you know. And, and a year later, obviously, we're all delighted. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna have to have myself for a minute, aren't I, kid? I said in March the day that the pieces in the cup, did I or did I not put it on foot to see that is your next manager? I also said I was delighted. I said he was gonna be manager when it was Stubbs or the other fellow from Portugal. I said it was Martinez when he got the job. I was the first softy who met him, there was five of us outside there, and he had me rosaries outside my shirt, and there was five of them, he'd see me rosaries and come straight up to me first, you know this is fact by the way, and it's my avatar on Twitter, and the first thing he said to him was, they'll both go, I didn't even say hi to him, Baines and Fellaini, and I didn't even say hi to him, and he looked at me and went, maybe, he said, if they do, I'll replace them with as good or better, deal, Put his hand out and I just went, Bobby Lad! <laughs> 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 his Bobby Lad. And then when we got to the West Brom game, three games in, and we had a midfield what wasn't fit for purpose, which we could get up the park, but we couldn't do the McCarthy thing where we get up and down the park if we lose the ball. We just put at one end of the park or the other. Gibson, Osmond, Fellaini, not fit for purpose. So I de then started my little Twitter thing. I had been to the mountaintop. <laughs> That's what, I, that's what I was putting, I, I, you know this by the way, I have been to the mountaintop, in other words, I've seen it, this is the future, this fella, and honestly I was consistent right the way through, and now to be at the end of the season, to sit back and look and go, I was so right, it's not about me by the way, it was about him, it was all, the, when I met him out there, I'm a clever lad, I'm not being funny or nothing, but I kind of am, and as soon as I seen him, I recognise the intelligence and this is a different deal from David Moyes with the greatest of respect. <laughs> honestly, I'm this is a completely, right? honestly, new blueprint, bigger, wider, better, the whole thing. He will do the academy for you, he'll do the transfer for you, he'll do the training for you, the whole nine yards. Well, it, for me, I mean, I did a phone-in on the day he got, he got the job and I was the same. I was a little same as Jake. It was just well, he was with me. Yeah, it was the I case of it. it was the case <laughs> of uh, it was a case of 
not knowing what he brought to the yeah. to the club, and that was that was the big that was the big uh, unknown, wasn't it at the time? I think that was really the big unknown, and it took it took either a presence of God in Dave, <laughs> but it took it took that little bit of convincing. But again, once he got that job going, once he come back from the Confederation Cup, he'd been in the Confederation Army, and once he got the pre-season mm. going, you could feel it. You could feel it. Going, but also, yeah. it was primarily defence. You said it, and you said it, and you said it. It was his defence problems. But if you actually look back to Wigan. He lost the whole defence at Christmas yeah. mm. and still won, won the cup. But he didn't keep them up, but he won the cup against FC Arabia, against Dubai FC, against Dollars <laughs> FC. He but went with nothing and won the goddamn cup. No, that's, fine. That's, that's fine, that's fine. Awesome. And that was that season he did lose his yeah. defence, but the but other three seasons he didn't lose. It was, it was, it was the big bad spot he were hitting him with when he got here. Mm. And oh, it, was yeah. in, in the, it was the inverted thing of that. It was actually. He made that defence win the cup. That's yeah. the real thing you should be going But well, also on top of that, he came to an Everton team who had a solid defence. Yeah, if anything, so, we had a solid defence. Yeah, and, and I don't know if you remember, but when we done that phone in, there was a fellow from Wigan. It was, yeah. Him, and he well, we up. thought he was winding us up we at the did, time. because it was like. It was marvellous. Yeah, but yeah. beyond, you know. Yeah, he was. was and, and we were like. Got, now we got the boss there. And we were struggling for calls, so we left them on yeah, for yeah. five or six minutes, and he just kept on going on about how brilliant Martinez was, and we were both sitting there going, "You're waiting for the yeah, waiting for the, the punchline, yeah. waiting for the punchline." If, if you call. remember, I phoned that day because on the you know on the blue room on the radio, I, I had been a little bit concerned when he was linked with us defensively, and I did phone up after hearing the press conference because. The press were then made up because he said, I'll get in Champions League yeah. and that was it, that's yeah. all they needed. Ooh. It was like Petzl, they Ooh. love it. And I phoned up and actually said, you know what, for the first time in a long time, Everton have yeah. put their head yeah. above the parapet and gone, we're here to try and win that trophies. We're not enough. just here, are we, to just exist. You know this, David. Yes. How many yes. times I phoned you? Jordan, David Moyes is telling you. And he moaned on the phone Absolutely. and just said, that not having it, he keeps getting us so far. Yeah. And then kind of going, yeah. nah, I'm not jumping, it looks a bit scary, yeah, yeah. and getting back down for them. So it exactly wasn't as funny though, the kind of, the, the opposite would happen, because Martin has said, I'm going to get Champions League for Everton, mm -hmm. and then everyone's going, whoa, he's too ambitious, yeah. what are you saying, so why are you making That's promises, you can't make, you're going, what are you doing, but I remember going on radio and, and, and other things and saying, you know, he's saying we'll get Champions League, but he doesn't mean this mm -hmm. season, he means over, over his contract mm -hmm. and all yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And you know, I did think that, that because it, it was a lot, yeah. but obviously he knew something that we didn't know and the chairman knew something that we didn't know and it was that he's got the ability to do that and he's shown up this season. Well, after a brilliant seat summer, um, preparation-wise was fantastic. Transfer-wise started quite well, bringing in the likes of Delafeu, getting the goalkeeper in. But then transfer deadline day, that was really the day, wasn't it? That was, yeah. that was the turning point, I think. That sort of nailed on after those first three games that that Everton do, you know, that that day sort of it, it no, the broke real, expectations. No, the real point was the real point was that Victor Moses was supposed to be coming here, yeah. and Liverpool gazumped us, and Liverpool were trying to bit slap him. Liverpool were trying to bit slap him. It was his first big transfer deadline and his first dip into the market at a big club, and he gazumped us at the last minute, and he didn't even want him. He didn't even want Victor Moses. Look how many games yeah. he's played for them this season. It wasn't about Victor Moses. It was about slapping him down and saying, don't think you've arrived in town trying to bully us up. That was at one o'clock. At 10 o'clock, he wheeled Lukaku out and sat him down in the chair and bit slapped them <laughs> right <laughs> that. that was the point. You've got, this yeah. one time you with Bobby, honestly, don't just look at the picture. It's a 3D image. It goes well back. It does all kinds of stuff to it, really, really. He's intelligent and he knows what cards to play and when. And sometimes, this season, I've seen us get battered at Liverpool, battered at Arsenal and not play well at Stoke. Those are the three times I can honestly say West Brom was kind of, we should have won the game and never turned up second half. But those are the three times I can honestly say he got this wrong today, tactically, um, selection-wise. Crystal Palace had home as well, the McCarthy thing, but particularly away from home, it's been magnificent. Let, it's all right, let's stop here. Yeah, we'll, we'll come to that, so let's go back a little bit. So we got to that deadline then, you talked about Moses yeah. and things, so we sat there. I'm actually away in Florida. You are. I normally go hiding around deadline yes, day, all we, of them before sure. and get no, no. <laughs> but anyway, I'm in a place with no Wi-Fi and I'm, I had to keep getting the signal and we're getting texted and mm. someone's texting me, panicking, <laughs> six and seven and eight and nine <laughs> and ten. 
and I'm saying I've had, I've had a word, just be quiet, it, you know, things are going to happen, but obviously what happened in that last hour was absolutely fantastic, yeah. and obviously Gareth Barry yeah. coming through the door, don't yeah. forget a lot of people that love selling your Everton plays of rubbish before the actual oh, come yeah, down the door, you know, Darren yeah. Gibson is another one, <laughs> Gareth Barry comes in, yeah. James McCarthy comes in, yeah. Both sat in a garage yeah. somewhere in Ireland, waiting yeah. for the phone call, and obviously Romelu Lukaku comes in. And as Ped said before, that was the moment then when that window slammed shut and Fellaini had gone, and we got rid of the fanfare, yeah. haven't we? Yeah. That was our Bain point. Baines had stayed as well, yeah. which was, yeah. which to be fair, was just as significant, by the way, as the other three lads yeah. coming in, because it wasn't the fact that. 28 and three quarters a year old Leighton Baines had stayed. No. It was the fact that Manchester United just up the road yeah. who the champions weren't yeah. able to get him yeah, out of yeah. the club. And Bobby said he so so that's it. We get Fellaini yeah. out, we replace him with the three. Was that the moment then where people just sat up and kind of went, he means a yeah. little bit of business this fellow? I think so, but I do think that the Baines was really significant and also the money that we got for Fellaini mm. as well. There was no one, I don't think, Associated the club who went, ah, got to that flame, he's gone mm, to the There was no one, there was absolutely no one. <laughs> and, and that was really significant as well. And even at the time, again, you know, I don't know whether it's just built in me because I'm an Evertonian, but I wasn't, I wasn't thrilled by Barry and I wasn't thrilled by McCarthy. But also, just, just going away from that, those three first three games, there was murmurs, wasn't it? The people who, who hadn't necessarily wanted a better man as in. That was that was the chance to give him a dig after those three games. Yeah. Three not brilliant teams, and we've seen from the rest of this the season that yeah, they're not three really brilliant, brilliant team. Purpose, but you're right, the, it wasn't his team and it was almost tough to that day. Yeah. And that was the day that the season really started. Yeah, can I just with those three games as well, because a lot of people go back to the three yeah. games, but we mustn't forget that in those three games, Nikita Djelovic almost won it at Norwich with about yeah. three minutes to go. And James Coleman going. hits the crossbar in the 93rd minute Correct. against West Brom and, ends yeah. and Leighton Baines gets attacked yeah. in the penalty yes. end by Gary yes. Meadow at Cardiff yes. Yes. and no penalties awarded. Yeah. So we could have came out of it, came out of it with six or seven points. As as Ben said and, and we've all said, that team that started it got us three points mm. and there was people starting to go, see it's old yet, this fella, mm. yeah, great pass it now, we don't yeah. go anywhere. Yeah. But when that window slams yeah. shut. Everything seemed to yeah. go from there, didn't it? There was the break, and then we had Chelsea and from there. I've got to say, though, two other things. First of all, Evertonians are out of order with Man Manoan Fellaini. Manoan Fellaini got us that £27 million. Mm. Mm. Manoan Fellaini did not at any point say, I want to go to Man United. Yeah. He sat and waited till the last 10 minutes of the transfer window, knowing that he was doing us a favour because he had that. But, I, I don't so think that anyone, saying, but I don't think anyone really has abused them all. Oh, I think he it, got it at Man United. He got it at oh, Man United. But he, he got it the same as more. I think sometimes United, though, when you've actually had a game and, and the chance is there to break them and you'll break them but in the plan, it's wrong. In the privacy of your own Oh no, that's just a, that's, that's just not that's, 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 that's just a wait for though, isn't it? That's just a wait for it's You've gone too many games to know that that happens. I think the thing what I say it's wrong. If I teach you the kids, I've got to say, see what you're doing, it's wrong. Yeah, no, that's fair right, enough. Right, but so what I'm saying to you is you're right, Fellaini deserves respect. He's, yeah. he's played for us for five yeah. years, he's a foreign player, yeah. sticking at a club sticking at a club where where he you know, wasn't in Europe, no. wasn't winning trophies for five years, it was mm. a big deal. And you're right, he didn't split the dummy, he knew he was going. Exactly. But he sat tight and he allowed them to kind of you know, manipulate And, and also McCarthy and, and Barry, I yeah. said this to you at the time, think Bobby again, yeah. don't just think more. I, I was he okay needed, with them. He needed, okay. he needed legs, McCarthy up and down, and he needed a quarterback. Yeah. McCarthy, Barry is the quarterback. McCarthy's the runner, he'll cover the ground, the other fella hits you with the ball. That's a, that's a blueprint. It's a system, it's isn't it? It's exactly system, what yeah. it is. It's system. precisely what it is. And so, therefore, give a system time. Yeah. When he walked in here, you said before, it seemed like he was all hyper and up. The reason he was up is because he had Kevin Morales and Phil Jagielka mm. and Seamus Coleman and Leighton Baines. And this was, wasn't what he was working at at Wigan. Yeah. And mm. he just won them the FA Cup. So he walks in here and says, if I put a centre forward over there, get a little bit of pace down the side, and, and a bit of cover, a midfielder, we need a goalkeeper still, we need the centre half cover still, there's things to be done, mm. but there's a way to the progress. Yeah, well, and this is spending nearly £100 million pound and I haven't got to it. This was the other right thing away. I was going to say for, I know you want to move on, please. This is the other thing I was going to say, was David Moyes 
it, it's out there now, you know, he's, the lad's obviously lost his yeah. job and, and I wouldn't mind doing 10 months from get six and a half million quid, by the way, but that's another story. If anyone's watching, he wants to give me that, it's fine. <laughs> but um, he done ever a fantastic job. He yeah. did, he really did. Okay, I, I've had a little go at because he gets so far and didn't want to do it. But yeah. he left Everton in really, really good shape. And like you said, Roberto Martinez has come in, threw a little bit of pepper and mm-hmm. a bit of uh, the yeah. in it and all I that, and mixed it up a little bit. Well, we went on that fantastic run from then on till, till, till Christmas. Mm-hmm. One defeat at Manchester City. But the two games that would stand out for me and still for everyone, obviously the win at Old Trafford and the, getting the late draw at the Emirates as well. Yeah. How much in those two games do you think showed the philosophy of Although how the philosophy changed within the club, the winning attitude, uh, the yeah, attitude to not lie down. Yes. It, it, it was all in the mind, you know, we, we've all watched Everton over the years, go to the likes of Anfield, go to the likes of Old Trafford, go to the likes of the Emirates and go with a defeated attitude before you even kick a ball. And Moyes said it when, when he went to United, you know, we yeah. felt lucky to get out on the yeah, right, or whatever, yeah. but, you, but you sensed that and, and that reflected on the fans. And I think that if anything's happened this season, it's that the players are enjoying playing. You can tell that, yeah. but more importantly, that spread yeah. to the to the crowd and yeah. to the whole ground. And you know what's happened? One thing, if I can point out one thing that really changed the season, is that if we go behind, everyone sings. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No one's moaning. No one's, no one's saying ah. This is typical yeah. us, this, this is typical yeah, yeah, yeah. that's it, we're not going to get back to it. We sing because we know we can get back. Yeah. And not only can we get a draw, we can win. And that's, that's, that's Martinez who's done that. And just to quickly go back to what you said there, is that Martinez has had this plan, but he's never had the team, and, he, and he's publicly said it, I've never had the team and, and the players who are capable of doing it. Certainly not in the, you know, the time that it needs to take, yeah, yeah. because by time, to getting into it, it's too late, it's yeah. the end of the season. And he said, when he's coming to Everton, he's got the players who have got the ability on the pitch, but also the mentality, he's got a nice mix between old and young, and he's come in with his plan, and he's gone, he can do it. But they bought and it, I think too. they bought it, the players they bought, bought it. But yeah. that, what you just said it. there, it's really, it, it takes me back to this year, yeah. because this year, and that one over there, the, the yeah. Cup and the Cup, yeah. Go to game and Everton were, were that good and, and yeah. a lot of young fans oh, watching it will be oh, like that. I don't know about you, but I used to think, certainly after Christmas, I hope they score first, yeah, not us, because that will fire us up. Because yeah, we walk through a lot of games yeah, and once that happened, you go behind and go, yeah. oh, and one of our best performances in 85 was the Sunderland 4 1, and oh, Ian Wallace scored yeah. ahead after yeah. 85 seconds. Yeah. Me and my dad are sat in the Bullens going, that will fire us up now, <laughs> and lo and behold, Andy yeah. Gray's doing five and eight. Paul Gray swells it and Glenn out with 50 yard oh, passes and everything. Everton won the game, and oh, you started to get that good. feeling of being united again. Yeah with the fans well, and the players. For thing. too many years, it's been going away. I wrote a piece on, on footyscene.com saying what's happened to my club yes. because it was starting to be a club that I didn't recognise yes. anymore. Yes. This year, yeah. the bridge started. Well, it was fractured within, wasn't it? Yeah. The fans were starting to get fractured because yeah. you felt like what was going on inside was a little bit fractured. Yeah. Yeah. I know Ken Wright and Moyes always seem to be happy families, yeah. but you always felt like yeah. they weren't yeah. always happy yeah. families. Yeah. You no. just, it was keeping it's up appearances, yeah. 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 But this season, because it does actually feel like happy families, yeah. everyone else is it's there. Be, it's because they feel like they've won the yeah. pool. Yeah. Everyone behind closed doors yeah. in there, we know some people in there. Between the three of us, we know most yeah. of the people yeah. in there. And they, themselves, feel like they've won the pools yeah. because he's a breath of fresh air. But getting back to your point, I went to every one of those 23 years at Man United and I watched us get yeah. Honestly, I, I, I came from Sunderland to watch Solskjaer score four on a 12 yeah. o'clock kickoff one day and he had to leave at five in the morning to, to be there at four nil down or whatever it was at half time with my head in my hands just going, what? But honestly, four, see, one, we scored I, that's right, we did score for Jeff to score, that's right, yeah. by the way. Um, my point was though, I was talking to Peter Rutten at the Revan in the Makers gig and he was on about Martinez and what it was and I said to him, do you know what lad? I was talking about Man United and I was with one that night <clears throat> and his boy and, and, and people who were sick with and have sat with for 20 years here and Blackburn, Dave, Peter, all of these people who have called the match up regular and we were all in the ground and to see that performance, mm. it, it, it was about, do you remember that Rooney nearly scored and he put it over the bar by about that far, about 18, 15, 18 minutes ago and we hadn't scored yet. Yeah. We got the ball 
and broke from that side. It come out, we broke down the other side. Both fullbacks flying on with 15 minutes to go at Man United when we've already got a point. Yeah. And I'm like, that's it. The noise was yeah. incredible. If you were in that crowd that night, the noise was incredible and definitely transmitted to the players. I, the thing what got me that night after we've scored as well, you know, I think Welbeck hit the bar or right, one yeah, over at nil nil, right, still nil nil yeah. at the time that we break, were breaking. And in the 80, 89th minute or the 92nd minute, McCarthy just brings the ball under control on the edge of United's box. Bodies are flying in yeah. and he just emerges. Yeah. And Martinez yeah. isn't going, yeah. uh, go, he's going, get up the oh, pitch to oh, Shane oh, Coleman, he's not going, get Don't yeah. forget as well. Phil Jagielka was on the edge of the box. For our goal, <laughs> he passed it. He yeah. was on our back. He was on the edge. And also, on our left back and also with one <laughs> at one nil, we're not doing the uh, we're not doing the weir sub. Uh, no, we no, 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 no. We're not doing the weir sub. 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 we are not I've got to say, we, and we've done a radio show the other week, and, and Peter was asking me to give over to the season. And people picked out Brian Oviedo and things like that at Man United. And what, when did it click? It's for me, that day it clicked. Yeah. We're 2 1 down. Joe Allen has gone through and it could have made it 3 1. Yeah. Baines goes off with a broken foot. Yeah. Normally, Leighton Baines going yeah. off, you, you want to walk out the stadium so, for, yeah. for, for mm-hmm. five years. Yeah. He went off, and you look over and you, you're thinking, yeah. that a yeah. Yeah. But he came on the kid. And he beat Liverpool with terrified. He should have scored within yeah, a couple of minutes. Staying on that point, staying on that point. Obviously, a couple of days later, we're at the Emirates. We're one 0 down. So a team that could have gone seven points clear. In fact, the TV, the TV commentators couldn't the help others. telling us yeah. how, how many points yeah. Arsenal. Yeah. He brings Delafeu on. Delafeu smashes one in. Yeah. And again, we've gone for it. We've gone for yeah. it. And that for me was was one of the big highlights of the season. Side first exactly. Half. We exactly. were the better side first half. Then they scored. He scored with seven the point. minutes left. That was, the point. On the play. that was the point that he still, in that time, even despite being the better side and then going behind our play from the Moyes would have rolled up and said, We had a good go, we dug in, One and we hit the bar. Mm. It, it was that close. Don't forget this that day. Saying, no. That day, Oxford scores with seven minutes left. Yes. Now, yes. I can only speak for myself, but when that went in, I, I, I knew well, that we wouldn't yeah, get beaten, even with seven minutes left. There was no, left, like, way, yeah. we're, we're, we're no way we lose this. And when Delafay scores that worldly, which it was, don't forget Lee Carthy nearly wins it in the end. Yeah, he'd have gone for a chip, he'd have yeah, been the keeper come off his line. Right, and, right, right. and he smashed it. Now, yeah. Obviously, that was, that was a brilliant period for us. That We go into Christmas, past Christmas, yeah. we lost more points than we won. Not by much, but we did. But two we games more players than I mean, we did. Exactly <laughs> we, we, lost, we, lost, we lost a whole team. Yeah. Mm. But two of the things that stood out for me were Sunderland and, all, and obviously the Derby. Mm. Now, different defeats, very much different defeats. But the two things that came out with them is that Roberto Manor said he learned from both of yeah. them. The Sunderland game, he said, we got beat back 1 0, one simple mistake. But I'm not going to spend the entire game putting 80 crosses in the box and yeah. getting a lucky goal off someone's back. Yes. What do you learn from that? Yes. And then from Anfield, he says the same thing. We went, we tried, we got suckered into yeah. playing away, but we still tried and we know what to do next yeah. time. How important were those two defeats in showing Roberto Martinez and the team how to bounce back from those little things? Well, we interviewed them a couple of weeks ago, they mainly spoke about the Liverpool one, but I'll come to that in a minute. The Sunderland one for me, I think the crowd, I think the crowd were magnificent. We'd lost a silly mistake, born out of trying to play this new way, rolled out to the Osman. And again, I could be critical of Osman only for the fact that he tries to stop the ball like that instead of taking it away from him and slips. And we know what happened, keeper gets sent off. And we lose the game, nearly equalised Jelovic right at the end again. And and, you know, we pounded Sunderland's goal and we end up losing the game. And everyone's distraught because we could have been in the top three that and day and we, we win a couple of days later against Southampton and everything's back on track the Liverpool one we went there with a patched up team and we probably showed Liverpool no respect really because we went there and thought we'll have a go with these because yeah. they're not all that because yeah. at that time they were bobbing about with us it was neck and neck and you look and thinking yeah. well we've they been there for for 11 years with David Moyes and yeah. parked the bus or tried to and lost anyway we've yeah. lost against 10 then yeah. a few times in Anfield so 
I was quite happy we were going to go and attack them. Mm. But that night we had Alcaraz who wasn't fit. That's we had Jags coming back, back in who wasn't fit. John Stones Same was full back. Everything was wrong. Lukaku goes off as they score. <clears throat> and what he said was that night, which was a horrible night for Evertonians, he said, what I learned that night was that from then on we'd be brave for the rest of the season. Yeah. We learned loads. But what I learned was the players weren't mentally ready to go 1-0 down at Anfield. And they were Anfield, terrified. Yeah. And so we got there. suckered in to Liverpool's and let's be honest, Liverpool are fabulous on the counter attack. If you give them spaces, you let a bully bully, they you bully, bully you. Exactly, and we played into their hands that night. And I think from that day on, I don't think we looked back at them, we went everywhere mm. and tried to be ourselves. Mm. That's it, I think you've got to lose to learn. Mm. And I mean, talk, talking from, from my experience, I remember when I started out doing comedy, I, you know, you pick certain gigs for when you're starting out, yes. so the gentle, nice yes. gigs. Yes. And I was doing really well, and I was just constantly doing well. And the fella who taught me, Chris Gaines, you know, really, like he's my mentor. Yes. And he said to me, you need to die. Yeah. He said, you need Don't to die. Harsh. And I, you know, I'm just fail a little just bit. Just because I was better than him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But he said, he said, you need to have an absolute stinker. Yes, sir. Because... You're lazy now. Make your way yourself yeah. in your comedy yeah. career. <laughs> he said you're lazy, you need to you yeah, need to fail to yeah. learn yeah. Yeah. and yeah. then you learn how, how not to so do that to again. It, yeah. And I think I mean and, and you know that Liverpool game it was horrible and, and separately I think they then went on from that. Yeah, then yeah went on yeah. from that. But it was it was weird because we got absolutely tonked. <laughs> but it didn't really feel like yeah, it. It, yeah, I always felt that it never felt as bad as it could have felt afterwards. Yeah. It could have been David, David, David Moyes. If that, that would have happened under David Moyes, we would have literally gone into a hole for the rest of the season and said, yeah. it's because of that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's because okay. of that, and that was because of this, this, and this. But getting back to the Sunderland game before they addressed yeah. Liverpool, the main thing, again, I'll give you the 3D, Bobby. I'm trying to be the intelligence aspect on the end of the thing here. No, the big what? picture, oh, really is. <laughs> this is a spectrum of intelligence, <laughs> by the way. It's absolutely inverted, but we won't go there. Anyway, he changed it at half time. He come out with three at the back, mm-hmm. and no one even mentioned it. Yeah. David Moyes was here for 10 years and never did that. If you could give him a bag of dough, he wouldn't have been that here. This fella did it in a game. We were losing for the first time in a year, and he did it in an instant. Mm-hmm. Just come out on the right, attack them, three at the back, let's go do it. And this side, was was that that was Phil Neville? It was Phil Neville. It was put your hand up over the line. That was that was Moyes, lad. That was this adaptability thing. So then we go to Liverpool, and I stood in that ground, keep running, and there was about fifty Evertonians left in the ground, and I waited because I wanted to see Kevin Morales because Kevin Morales was a hero on yeah. that night, a hero. He was on his own, by the way. Yeah. And he walked up, and they're in the ground, and no one's left, no copies have left. They're all laughing and pointing and singing and laughing and pointing and singing and laughing and pointing and singing the way they do. And Kevin Morales walked up to us, stood there and lifted his shirt up and said, Oh, the Adel yeah, baby. Yeah, yeah. And I nearly cried. I got all emotional. I was like, If you can do that here on a night like this and still get that this is a fan thing and we go again on Saturday, that oh, was don't use that phrase. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to give yeah, you yeah, an example yeah, of it. It was a moment. Um, it was a moment. It was different. Well, you know what? Moment. What I'm going to say before we move on again is the moment they come four days later because Correct. we're here. We've got Aston Villa at home with yeah, it in the bottom three. We're one nil down. Yeah. Things are Ross Barkley slips. Yes. They score with the first yes. attack. You get to half time. You're thinking, I'm going. We've just. You know, we've lost a lot of players, we've just been chunked around field, mm-hmm. we're a goal behind at half time, mm-hmm. we're not playing well, it was the slowest home performance of the season. And he comes on and changes it, mm-hmm. PNR comes on and, and we're trying, things aren't really working. He puts John, uh, James McCarthy right back, yeah. it's just a mind blower, yeah. and he kicks us on, on comes Stephen Naismith. And before you know it, PNR and Naismith have combined, Naismith equalises, mm-hmm. we get the free kick, Morales wins oh, the game. Lies. And from that day, everyone just sort of went, like Anfield was last week, yeah. we, and, yeah. and we will carry on now, and we move on again. Yeah. And I, I think from that moment, we really did step up and carry on. Well, we suffered then, didn't we, with those injuries? Obviously the feats away at Chelsea, Spurs. Um, a lot of, there was a lot of... We had the bad. Yeah, there was a lot of hard and stuff about the transfer window. A lot of people were saying, you know, whether it be on Twitter or... or you know, radio stations, whatever, we shouldn't have gone out and bought more players, blah, blah, blah. Shouldn't have got rid of Yelovich, we shouldn't have lost Heights and get completely forgetting what they give yeah. us all season, yeah. which was absolutely nothing. 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 We get to the we get to the beginning of March, we get that West Ham game. 
and at the time it looked like it just a nothing game mm. but when you think from that day to the know. end of the season where we went important. once we got all them players back yeah. we never looked back okay bar the FA Cup defeat at Arsenal from that day winning those games in a row you just couldn't fault any of it no. some of the football towards the end of the season was mind boggling yeah, yeah. some of the best football some people have ever seen yes. you know not everyone's as old as you but you know thank you, some of these people thank some you people. by the way yeah. thank you. <laughs> some kids have never seen that kind no. of football have they no and i think uh, you know we got luke Carkey, but let's let's just quickly we lost to Tottenham against the Dunham Play, should yeah. have had the Stonewall we penalty. Have had stone. like and their goal should have, should have been allowed. Twice when he hit the goalkeeper with it three or four times. Within the first goal. Of the corner, it's, it's in then the at Chelsea, we, we, I think we were better side for about an hour, then they came into it, but we still were yeah. really hanging on it. Mm-hmm. And Tim Allen makes a mistake at the end, and we lose that game. But we get Lukaku back, and we beat West Ham, who'd come and had, they parked about 15 buses yes, back, they yeah. forget too, they had everyone in, you know. And it was, you like know, from the Arsenal game, 1 1, Ross Barkley misses an absolutely guilt head chance. If we go 2 1 up, yeah. we might win the game. We had James Coleman right to half time pulled down in the box. Yeah. For me, it was a penalty. It was as soft as Oxe Chamberlain's one. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But from then on, we did get into our rhythm, didn't yeah. we? We started churning out these victories, Cardiff and Swansea. And before yeah. you knew it, three victories turned into four, yeah. and it, it, it flew from there. What, what I think is important with the way he plays and the way he sets up the players is that he allows everyone to play. Yeah. Every player on that pitch is playing, yeah. and they're all involved in the game. Yeah. And that's, as a, as a professional footballer, I'm saying that as if I am one, <laughs> but, <laughs> but you want to play. That's what you want the ball, yeah, do, just right. touch, do you know what I mean? Yeah, you want a to play. touch. Absolutely. And it's different from playing the type of game that, that we have been used to over the years, where it's getting up and just... It's the anti-Phil Neville. Phil Neville yeah. Phil Nevel for years. He's I'm getting it, Phil Neville. It's really not. I didn't mean to... Uh, it's just that he was the motif. That, that's what they laughed at us. Yeah. For all that time on the day of money, that was the reason. It was hard that. work over skill. It was. It That's was what it was. Endeavour over skill is what it was. It was. It's endeavour and, and it, 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 it's a, a, a Protestant um, ethic. What do Don't start bringing religion oh, into oh, this. No, 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 no. no. small P now. <laughs> all right. Small P now. No sectarianism. No. I meant it's hard working. And, 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 and ecumenical in that it's, it's uh, be loaded. Mm. But it's not actually. It's not the artisan, it's not the skill aspect, whereas this was. But it's a, bl- it's a blueprint of humanity, isn't it? So many exactly, teams will be exactly that, that, they that, were that reflected the boys, class back the now. Scottish, that thing, it, it, it looted him, you know what I mean? That's it's, what the. But, yeah, he's in the, he was very much in the mould of Alex Ferguson, but exactly. United played with Flair and we didn't. So. Yeah, and United played with Flair after 15 years. So obviously, we've, we've got this run, playing fantastically well, beat Arsenal. We're set up against Crystal Palace, it's yeah. in our hands, and then we go from Everton. <laughs> we go from Everton, we go and do what? what? It, completely out of contact yeah, for the rest yeah, of the season, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. It's completely out of contact. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But that night, I felt like, as much as the players let us down, I think the fans just Definitely. couldn't quite cope or couldn't quite grasp the importance of what, what that night meant. When you look back, that's probably one of the most disappointing things of the season. Well, it's good to look back on a season and, and have that as a disappointing thing mm-hmm. of your season, do you know what I mean? And I think, like, this season, it's, it's took everyone by surprise. I know you're saying that you knew he was going to do it, but it still That's took it yeah. by surprise how... And it, it, the rest of the teams have done well as well mm-hmm. around us, which mm-hmm. is that's disappointing as well. It's top heavy league but, this year. Yeah. yeah, and it's like, you know, Ever- Everton, you know, I, I'm going to have to change it tomorrow, but my password in, in work's always been like, <laughs> it's been Everton 6th, <laughs> oh, no, Everton 5th, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everton 4th, <laughs> Everton 3rd, yeah, it's back yeah. down now, you know, mm-hmm. but, and you know, it, it's, that's, it's been that type of season when you go, going, we could get 50th, yeah. I'm going, we could... Hang on, we could actually get four, we can get third. And it shows how, how good a season it's been that we're so disappointed that we haven't finished fourth. If you, if you think to that Chelsea game, that day, I sort of went after that. That's the Champions League finish now. We just lost there, we were, we were giving it the binoculars, we mm. were that far behind. And to go on that run and then to get to that Crystal Palace game, thinking we actually go still fourth here yeah. and in command and of that fourth if we win it, tonight. Yeah. And I think you're right, that night there was just a feeling. I think the problem that week was Manchester United was coming and David Moyes was coming and we were boss and we wanted to go up and we were going to play this football and tear United apart and all that happened mm-hmm. but it got in the way of Crystal yeah. Palace, Crystal Palace, I don't know what would have been worse whether we'd have played on the very very wind night of Jared Delafayu, you know, the, the irony of that one is we're actually sitting in the pub 
the world famous Winslow Hotel where the roofs blew up there, yeah, the tiles the roof, that caused the game. The game. And look at it now, it's a yeah. masterpiece. Yeah. <laughs> but I think that night, I think the James McCarthy factor was massive. I think he played, he, he, he made a little bit of a, a, a blue that night. He, 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 made he put us top heavy he with made an attack an and play. He made this season, mm. that was one of them. It was, yeah. Tactically, got tactically did. And he's got to put his hand up to take But he mustn't out. forget how good Crystal Palace were. No, no, and Chris then Bull. Chris Bull came Bull after that. Chris Bull, if you don't mind. You know. I'll let it be with The two, two Merseyside clubs, he put six goals. That's the same thing that follows me on Twitter. Talk to him all the time. And he did tell me in the daytime, that they, they were a different side. I was in there with Simon. I met Simon mm. the day of the first one. And by the yeah, time yeah. the roof tiles fell out, I was on my fifth <laughs> bottle of Chardonnay in the end. Yeah, we all seen the pictures. We all seen the pictures. To be honest, I was saying it's all right. We all seen the pictures. But we finished with 72 points, which I think Man, Roberto Martinez thought was going to be enough for Champions League. And it just happened to be the only year yeah. where the record number of points just didn't get you into the Champions yeah, League. Right. So I think on that point of view, we can all look back and say what Tick a magnificent box. season yeah. it was. Yeah. I think, I think it, it exceeded most people's <laughs> expectations. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry to say No, but you it's know, I, I think, you know, it's, a, it's everything, it's not, it's not the points, it's not the position, it's, it's the play, it's the yeah, style, it's the, it's, it's the positivity around the ground, it's the positivity in the play. The players are playing with a smile on their face, as I said, they want the ball, yeah. and that's such a massive difference. You know, a lot of time under Moyes, you got this feeling that people didn't want the ball, they, yeah. didn't, they didn't want the blame for what yeah. was going to go wrong almost. Mm -hmm. Now, the, everyone, look at one of the players that, uh, you know, and, you can almost sum up the season with this. Is John Stones, nineteen yeah. years old. He's he's out. He's potentially could be going to World Cup yeah. because he wants it. He wants yeah. to play. He's Does getting he it. He's running up with it. Absolutely And yeah. that that all that is now what the club is becoming. Mm -hmm. And I'm we're, and we're coming back. And it, you know, I've just said that's what we're becoming. But that's what we are. And that's what we kind of that's what lost we've, a little we've bit. Away from it, and that's what that's what we're coming back to. And I think that the three plays I would. would encapsulate Roberto's first season for me would be Brian Oviedo. Yeah. Well, we lost Leighton Baines in that yeah. Liverpool game. And people were saying, you know, there was a very um very small video on YouTube of four minutes of our left back giving some um slightly entertaining fans a lift in pre season to <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And they're saying don't go Baines yeah. and can Oviedo do it and Baines actually says and I think he's a good player. Yeah. Well we all saw that when he got on that team. So yeah. much of the fact that after a couple of games it was late and we yeah. weren't going yeah. Yeah. Baines yeah. still not fit. Yeah. There's him and Stephen Naismith who yeah. has Absolutely. done the full circle Absolutely. thing. You know, he's really almost re reinvented himself I would yeah. say to be a player right where position. you would say for me He's the best finisher that the club gave him yeah. a chance. He, he might not have the speed or whatever, but put him in front of the They're the players who've most improved this season, definitely. But just going from you, Dave, who, who was your player of the year? It was, to be honest, he never got it. It would have been j -Man. It had to be j -Man. Only because of, back to me telling you all that I was right in the first place. Seriously, seriously, when he comes, honestly, go to footy. I'm really not lying. It's there in black and white. Go to our site, put it in the thing and go through the timeline. My point was, if he believes he's a £13 million footballer, some Irish fella comes to me on the week that it started, you know what we're like with Twitter, me and Ford Official, sends us this bit and says, watch this video, Ireland versus England, James oh, McCarthy yeah, at Wigan against the Ian Gerrard, has him in his back pocket, by the way, says, watch it, don't watch the ball, watch these yeah. two, has him off, little five minute video, has him off, he said, you're going to be fine, he's a cracker. So I'm thinking, it's what we need, the up and down thing about, it, about the first three games where we can't move. Yeah. So I'm thinking, even if he does that, yeah. if he does that, well, it's sound, well, if he believes he's a £30 million footballer, he's come from the other nothing. So he's not going to spend a big mad dollar. It's like yeah. a poor person winning Joe tomorrow. You be careful with it. You spend a bit of it, but you be careful not to go back there again. That's the point. So once he came, it would be J Mac, but Shane's. James, you can't have a two. No, but I'm saying he <laughs> wanted James, but you've got it. Yeah, you no, we were just like him because he went yeah. on to a whole different level. Yeah, they were terrified in this season. Big teams were absolutely frightened to the floor from James Coleman. So James yeah, McCarthy. It's got to be McCarthy for me as well. He's, he's the person who you feel safe in his hands, yeah. don't you? He yeah. gets the ball and you know that he's going to find someone mm -hmm. and he finds space. And, and his, I haven't seen him put a, a pass out of place. He's, mm -hmm. he's, his passing is immaculate. Mm -hmm. it, it, 
so precise. It's, 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 yeah. I don't know. I don't know where he came from because last season I didn't see that. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether you should have because he done it to Phil Neville. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, so if you want to do it to Phil Neville. <laughs> 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 yeah. I've, I'd, uh, I'd say McCarthy as well, and, and I'm not gonna wave my flag and say I was right, but I was right because I've seen him many times, <laughs> absolutely bossed and he was at Liverpool as a youngster, watched them at Wigan. The thing for me is, and you would be good for Everton because yeah. you've just had, you've had a midfielder for four seasons, as a manager, mm -hmm. you trust them, mm -hmm. and you go there and you say, and the thing what McCarthy done was he come in ready made to yeah. play in that role Probably because he knew good. everything that was expected yeah. of him. Mm -hmm. There was no coming in and saying, right like James, you've been running after the ball under the different manager, this is what we do. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. just come in. And I went through it um, I went through a night with James McCarthy and Gareth Barry very early on after the Chelsea game actually, the first when Naismith scored and he was talking about Martinez and he was saying it's it's absolutely fantastic training every day. Mm -hmm. But he said you drill into what you do. He said, so I just know what he wants, so I just go in and do it. Yeah. And it showed him. So for me, yeah. we'll be James McCarthy. McCarthy. Obviously, big summer. Hang on, you, player of the year. Oh, McCarthy, no problem. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not, not going to go on about it. Um, big summer coming up now. There's a possibility Lukaku could go, Barry, De La Feu. So those three need to replace him before any, anything else happens. Realistically, what, what's a number we're looking for to bring players in? I think well, you've got you've got to replace. Let's just say they're gone, so you've got to replace the three, mm. and then I think you need a, a, another two or three. I, I'd imagine, but I trust them. That's the difference is that I trust them with the transfers. You know, he's talking about. I know there was rumours about um, Tom Clever, Kev Cleverly said, "Oh, there's rumours," and now I was like, "What?" But then I went, yeah. "I'm gone." Roberto Martinez is our manager. Yeah. And, yeah. and he had them at Wigan as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, it's the same with okay. it's the same with Rodwell, isn't it? Keep on getting linked yeah, with Rodwell, yeah. Yeah. and we know we know the, we know there are links there, and people are going. But you just have to say that man must already have a role yeah. for that player, and exactly. that's, that's the way you got to look at it. I mean, I think it'd be really disappointing if. Um, if Barry went to, I don't know, he's rumoured to go to Arsenal, and I don't know, I'd be, I, and I know that it's a chance of Champions League for him and stuff, but I don't know, I'd be really disappointed with that, uh, out, of, out of them three anyway, that's one that's I'd be disappointed I with. I can't see Barry going anywhere, I can't see Delafoyle going anywhere for at least a season, so I think you're talking about Lukaku, but even with them three, if, first of all, if they leave, other clubs, other G14 clubs have seen what we've mm. done with these kids, yeah. so believe me, they'll be banging the door down there going, Bobby, we've got yeah. them, Bobby, we've yeah. got them. So that, I'll put to one side, the European loans, have as many as you like. Yeah. The other thing, I'd say you're looking at five or six, because I'd say that this season, he will address the goalkeeper situation. He will address the centre-half situation. He needs a cover for both full-backs, by the way. So there's four or five before we started, and we haven't actually got to the offensive stroke engine room part of the, of the team, which is what he addressed first last time. And, and we're going to lose people potentially from both of those areas, so we'll be looking to strengthen. So I'd say five, six, maybe even seven. Just mentioning Lukaku there, would you pay the 20 million yes. for him if you want? Yes, it's an absolute no brainer. He's a 20 year old striker. If you take his age, he's the best 20 year old striker on the planet. He, his problem is, Jose won't pick him because he can't play on the one with his touch in the Champions League. That's a problem. But he's 20 years of age. Mm. He's the age of Ross Barkley and, and, and younger than Seamus and younger than J-Mac. This is an investment. We can't lose on this. Just by the focus we get alone, he'll be, there's no uh, Benteke, so we will now lead Belgium's attack in the World Cup. And they've got a decent shout. After Spain, they're the best European team in it. By the way, and if he comes back here, it's a statement. Mm. Then, in two, three years' time, when he does want to go, because he will want to go, he's not one of us, he doesn't want to stay forever, but we ourselves progress as an institution. Mm. We pay the dough, we double our dough. It's like what Liverpool do, or, 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 or City, or United, or Arsenal. It's big club stuff. So, yes, I agree. I think, I think we need six or seven, mm. obviously. There's, you know, rumours about the scene at mm. that's being close to being done now, mm. today. Um, there's the young kid, the Irish kids coming over in right back, so we're talking about mm. replacing yeah. uh, Seamus. You know, having yeah. the back of yeah. Seamus yeah. going, we're getting the lad in from Ireland. Yeah. The Scottish left back, Robertson's another yes. one. So there's, I would say, them three are pinned underneath. I think mm. on top of them, you need five. I don't personally think Lukaku will stay there. I haven't mm. thought it all season. I think he wants him, but I think there'll be other clubs. And I, for me, I, I'm not so sure. I just think he'll, I think he'll move on. So you'd need 
some of them, but I'm not even bothered about him moving on because mm -hmm. I think he'll just replace with better. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, I know you're saying he's the best 20 year old on the planet. He, that may well be, but if Everton's budget is 30 million and you think, well, we're going yeah. to cost us 22 yeah. and then we need another six on top of it, yeah. you do look and go, hang on a second. Yeah. If he's up for it and goes, you know what, this is where I want to play, mm -hmm. pay it, pay it by all means because he is raw, his touch is diabolical. Mm -hmm. He's not in the box enough, no. but he still ended up with 16 goals yeah. and he's 20, so he's worth an investment. Yeah. It's just how much it costs. I think it's important just to remember just the final point about we've still got Kone in there. Mm. You know, we we we've talked yeah, about we, this before and, and, and Gibson. We don't know what it, we don't we don't actually yeah. know what it's like. Yeah. No, no, for two he got like, seventeen four. goals for Wigan. He yeah, did. and he's under Martin. Mm. He did. Yeah. So, so yeah, you know, let's let's people. let's not forget that he is there, and you know, it's still to be seen what he's going to be like. But he is there, mm. and he pro it's probably good that he's kind of just taken away. We're not talking about it because he can get on with his with his game and his training and his fitness, and you know. He, he could might, be a surprise yeah, package. Yeah, he he just, just finally on, on expectations for next season. Obviously, we've got the Europa League as well coming up, and that means we're going to need a bigger squad. What are the realistic ambitions for next season? I'll say that it might. I don't know if I, I'm not going to give you positions, but what I would say is that this is another step now. Mm -hmm. So the thing about the Champions League, it was too early for the Champions League. It was too early to get the ethos is ethos into this side on a, a, a leg by leg basis. It, you can do it in the FA Cup because it's only five games. This is not, it's 15, 16, 17 games. And, and after Christmas, the Champions League team drop down and it gets all kinds of serious. The dough isn't all kinds of serious, but the actual experience is, and it can traumatise you like Ben Fieger done towards that time. Mm -hmm. It can traumatise you. And he's looking to avoid the trauma mm -hmm. because it's really important to us on a progressive level as we go forward. So I'd say you might have to take two steps forward and then one back. This coming season might be the one where we just get our, where we have to feel our way into it. And then the season after that, with that experience behind us, we finish seventh, eighth, sixth, something like that. We have a decent couple of might even win a cup. I was that for But the actual progress is still maintained. Yeah. It's just going a little bit senior than, than going forward because you need the experience. And when he gets there, should he get that experience, He'll have the full gambit. Mm. The experience is everything you need, the legs, the, the on the pitch, everything. I think every season you need to go into the next season looking to improve. Every season. I think every season, I think any team in the world, regardless of if you are Wigan or if you're Man United, mm -hmm. you, your aim is to win the league. Mm -hmm. Everyone's aim is to win the league, of course it is. But I think you're, you're exactly right. It's about learning, it's about being patient, and it's about taking our time, and it's about this plan that we've got, you know, we've just got to be patient. If we get knocks, we get knocks, and that's all part of learning. But I think that yeah, I've got to, you've got to look at improving on this on the previous season, and I think that's what I think every single player in there will be itching for next season. Yeah. So you all will, mm. and that's why you need to you need to take that. You need to run with it. Let them mm. let let that go. I don't think it'll impact us at all. Speaking to me, he talks about having um, dual responsibility for both tournaments and using players sparingly and things like that. And I think the group games, if you win your three home games, we're in the group now, we know mm. that. So uh, it doesn't start till September. So if we win our three home games, that's nine points. Mm. Get a draw away, lose the other two, it doesn't matter. You're getting yeah. out of the group with ten points and you can play your kids. It's about a progression and it is too early for the Champions League next year won't we no. because if we'll get out of these groups and we're playing European football in February and March yeah. and I watched the, that Europa League and it, it isn't all that you know it's about possession what will be different this time is when we got in under David Moyes and I'm not trying to berate David Moyes in any way shape or form when we were in under David Moyes we played a very different style of football yeah. this style of football is more conducive to Europe it's keeping the ball possession so I think I think you're right, I think we'll be right in the mix for the top four and I think we'll be right in the mix for quarter-finals of the Europa League and if we, we do that, I think we'll be really, really happy with that. Good stuff. Gents, it's been an absolute pleasure. Dave Feely from footyscene.com, local comedian Jake Mills. Uh, if you want to get involved with the show on Twitter, it's at ToffeeTV1. Also subscribe on YouTube, ToffeeTV1 from myself, Peter McFarlane and Barry Cass. We'll see you next time.